I'm going to unbox Plains Indian Wars, a game designed by John uh, Poneski and published by GMT Games. And I'm excited about this for several reasons, but two primary reasons are, uh, number one, I like John's designs. Uh, he has a unique approach to uh, to the topic uh, or to the topics that he chooses to do games on. Um, most notably, one of the more recent games I have from him is Bleeding Kansas, which you know uses you know cubes and has kind of an area control and cards and stuff. This one I think has some of those similar elements. I don't know if it's if it's a similar design or similar game mechanics, but it has some of those similar elements of of cubes and areas and cards, um, which you know are, are becoming a little bit more uh, common in, in war games, but is not a traditional, you know, war game, uh, mechanism or components. Uh, so that's one aspect I like to see where John takes things. Uh, number two though, is, uh, this topic, uh, of dealing with Native Americans, uh, or, you know, as the time period, uh, American Indians or, or what term you want, whatever, one of the, whatever the proper term is to use for that, um, has, has interested me, uh, 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 more recently, uh, I probably go back about maybe five, six years is when I, when I really started becoming interested in this topic. And the, and the first game, uh, in that regard was King Philip's war, which I didn't know much about that period and, uh, got a hold of that, played that and was like, okay, this is, this is interesting. And started looking out there for other games. And there are a few out there that, that go back even to the, you know, 70s or 80s, but not a lot on this topic, not a lot on that, that focus on um, Native Americans or the, or the conflicts or the culture or anything that kind of surrounds that period. And so, uh, especially in, in a war game setting. So uh, that interests me. And so from there, I started, you know, collecting and playing and looking at different perspectives uh, on this topic. So this is from Multiman Publishing. Uh, Here's uh, Custer War, uh, Custer's Last Stand from Worthington. Uh, here's Once We Move Like the Wind from uh, Compass. And then, of course, GMT is, you know, this is their first title from, uh, from, from GMT. Here's Common Chera, which is designed by Joel Toppin, who came up with, uh, this is a solitaire system where you're basically uh, uh, taking control of the Common Chera uh, uh, their whole culture for a, a, a period of time. You kind of take them on a, on a history or a journey uh, over a period of time and it get to experience uh, a lot of the different things that affected them uh, in, in, their, in, the, in this region um, and, and how they, you know, and, and you kind of make decisions based on that. So it's, it's a really uh, interesting uh, game design. Uh, it's definitely different and unique from other things out there other than uh, Navajo Wars. <laughs> which was his follow-up um, to Common Shara. And it, it's not the exact same as uh, Common Shara, but it, it, it draws a lot from it. And there's a, there's, a, there's a lot more similarities than there are differences, especially when you look at some of these other games out there. Uh, you got Legion Games has... Um, yeah, there was Navajo Wars. Legion Games has a series of games. Uh, as you can see here, this is Volume 1. Um, but that cover of... You know Native Americans and conflicts. This is, and they're ma they're mainly focused on battles or specific battles at a, at a tactical level. This is the Battle of the Adobe Wall, um, and then uh, keeping with the tactical games, uh, Lock and Load has games Savage Wilderness and uh, Bloody Mohawk that uh, deal with you know the French and Indian War at a very very tactical level. These are very uh, simple games from a war gamer's standpoint. In fact. They're like one mappers and not even a whole map and, um, you know, very, very small counters uh, count that, that's on the board. Uh, there's some scenarios that might only have like five or six counters. I mean, these are not uh, super complex games. The rules are very, very uh, easy uh, and accessible. Uh, and, you know, this isn't for, you know, the people that love Chrome. This is our great introductory games for people getting into war games. It's the basic, you know, hex counter move uh, attack type stuff. But uh, but they're interesting. I mean, they're, they're, they're really quick. They're easy to get into. And there's several that come in here. Um, and then I actually went back and, and picked up 
Uh, this is no longer in print, and this company uh, is no longer, I don't think, is active. But Victory Point Games, uh, Mound Builders, which is based on the States of Siege system. Uh, and, in, and if you're familiar with the States of Siege system, uh, it's basically kind of a tower defense type thing where you've got a center point where uh, some uh, combatants or some forces are coming to attack you at that center, and you're trying to, you're rolling dice to kind of, stave them off and there's cards that are based on some kind of historical context that will help you push them back or or move them f f you know further along the track this does it even uh brings some even uh more novel and unique aspects to that whole system but does it with uh the focus on the mound builders which were some of the earlier uh, earliest uh inhabitants of uh of north america and i'd be re remiss if i didn't talk about the academy games series uh, this was my first that I got from them, uh, which is uh, 1812, Invasion of Canada, uh, and the uh, French and Indian War, uh, 1754 Conquest, French and Indian War. And these games are, again, uh, kind of have an area of control, have cubes. Hey, cubes, right? Um, and, and they do a unique way, and they have actually unique dice, you know, uh, that uh, help you deal and resolve combat. You know, the different combatants are going to have uh, specialized dice. That, that push you in combat and they have cards as well so you've got uh, some of the things that i think are similar to plains indians war here but um anyway let's dive into this and see what this uh has in store for us as we go in here you look at the back of the box here uh there's your cards i was talking about i don't know if this is card driven or card assisted i have um i have to uh look at those uh i, I can't remember how, how these uh, play out uh, or how these are used necessarily, but you've got some dice here. It looks like you've got some unique dice uh, here, or uh, I don't know how unique they are, but at least there are different colors. Um, the uh, age count is 14 plus. Players one to four, so it looks like this has got a solo. Uh, it's got a, includes a full solitaire system, so it's got a solitaire dedicated system. Uh, another plus in my book. That's not necessarily a necessity for a lot of people, but I like those. That, that do draw that do have uh, give attention to get, uh, solo play complexity is uh, on the lower on the medium side but on the kind of low end of the medium side and uh, sol uh, solitaire playability is it's not the highest it's just highs that's interesting because it's got a solit uh, solitaire um, dedicated solitaire bot so or, or system so that'd be interesting what you what we have there but let's get inside the box and see what's in here. That's the thing you guys all came for, and I do not want to disappoint any more than I already have in this video. Let's see if we get the shrink wrap off here. And I haven't seen a lot of um, you know, unboxings on this one yet either, so uh, I don't know if that's a matter of I just haven't found them or people uh, have not been buying this game or is interested in this game so a uh, decent sized box uh, i don't know if that's a three inch one of gm three inches there but pretty thick box pretty solid stable box there uh here right off the bat here's the solitaire rules which are oh, picked up more than one rule book there which uh are 15 pages but those are with design notes so it looks like you got 14 pages of and that's with scenarios, okay? So there's several scenarios here for your solitaire. So really, maybe that's the scenario. So six pages, six pages of solitaire rules. So, and that solitaire variant one is, um, is five pages. So solitaire variant one is five, solitaire variant two is six, and the rest are scenarios that you can play. So not uh not a lot of reading there that's good I like to keep it simple here's the rule book and you've got some charts on the back i love it when they don't waste dead space and here you got some uh charts on the back of that as well so you got a sequence of play which are essential in 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 solitaire games but uh it's good to have those in any kind of game, what your sequence of, pl uh, sequence of play are or is, victory point schedule and credits. So you got a little bit of charts there, and then you got the rules variant. So the rules themselves, I mean, total package are 15, but that's with variants. So 
So, and you, it's your full color, dual column. Looks like you've got some specialized notes or uh, rules there, or maybe examples of play. Oh, there's a setup. I love setup, uh, which, you know, it was very common in Euro games. And this one looks like it's pulling some thoughts from some Euro games with like the cubes and the areas and stuff. So something that you find in the cards, something you find commonplace there. Here's your faction deck. So there's, there looks like there's unique faction decks for each of the uh, factions. Imagine that. So there you have it. The rules don't look that uh, that weighty. Something I can probably get into, you know, maybe today if I got time. Here's your player aid cube movement chart. How you move the cubes. This is a cube pusher. Uh, sequence of play. And then you've got some, this is, I guess, the probability on the dice uh, on what, what you roll on each of the different dice. So the dice look like they are different and unique. So, hey, something that, you know, you see in the uh, Academy Games uh, series. You get a mounted map board. We'll pull that out in a second here. Oh, here's all the different cards. So you've got, and they are like tarot size. So that's kind of cool. Tarot size. And you've got, there's a good old Custer, and it's an event. Here's Sitting Bull, Cochise, and Central Pacific Railroad. So the, the theme of this game, this is, again, kind of taking, um, a, uh, this is a period uh, piece. This isn't just a specific war or specific battle, that hints in the name wars. Um, you're basically covering the, I think the, the intent of the design here is to cover uh westward expansion and how you know settlers were moving west and and, and we're expanding the railroad and then how that conflicted or impinged upon the territory where uh, the native americans uh existed or and at that time period called indians where they existed and so that is the conflict of the game is that westward expansion and the and the settlers and then the the military coming to protect them or or stave stave off uh, the Native American threat, uh, as you have it, or you know, have conflict, and then the Native Americans, you know, you know, existing on their land or their their area, and uh, trying to preserve, I guess, their their culture and point of view. Uh, here's the dice. Very nice uh, die here. Dice here. These are uh, plastic and with printed on there. So as you say, you have unique faces depending on what you, I uh, don't know if that was a good roll or a bad roll. So that's kind of cool. And then you got a bag of cubes. So no counters in this bag, right? This is all cubes um, for the different factions and, and used as markers and what have you. Um, and then you get a bag. So I imagine there's some, maybe some pulling cubes out of a bag to populate. That's something that was in uh, his uh, Bleeding Kansas game you know, to, to, to kind of help populate the board there. So that, oh, let's get a look at this map here. If I can get, if I can pull out enough space for it. It's a nice mounted map here. And I tend to like mounted maps. Um, it's my old, it's the Avalon Hill in me uh, coming out of uh, being kind of used to having a mounted map it was called a board game right not a not a paper map game oh i got that upside down so let's of course i'm going to do it the wrong way while i'm on film and then my limited space i have here here we go man i got too many games on my table so there is your map you've got a ready box you've got casualties here you've got uh sacramento here here's a, another ready box then you've got casualties, St. Louis. You got St. Louis and Sacramento. So stuff coming from this is probably for the railroad. Um, and then you've got the St. Louis one coming this way. So you're basically covering from St. Louis to Sacramento uh, on this board. And then uh, there's disc draw down here. That's off the map. You got let's pull this up a little bit. You got Mexico there at the bottom of the map, and you've got Canada up there so um and you got these territory markings or, or boundaries so pretty cool i mean I, I like the look of it it's very uh uh i do like the look of it i like some of the the contours and the colors all look fine um i like it
um, looks like it should be relatively easy to uh, get into from that aspect of it. So let's uh, let's take a look at some of the cards here. If I can get into that, if I can get these open with time here. Don't have my handy dandy knife on me. So you get you. There's a U.S. Cavalry deck. There is a Southern Plains tribes, and then there is the Northern Plains tribes. So let's get these Northern Plains tribes, which you have Sitting Bull here. And there's some symbols on the card. There's numbers on the card. Uh, there's some text here about how you play this, and then you got some historical context there as well. I always like that when they there's some historical context that's added to it as well. There's Crazy Horse. So um, looks like there's events and there are war parties. So this, uh, again, I, I should have probably looked at this a little bit earlier, but this looks like this might be more uh, card-assisted than card-driven. But again, there's numbers on there, so, you know, could be wrong on that. It's been a while since I saw something on this. Um, uh, I think the last, last time I saw something was probably a year ago on one of John's videos on the development of this. So let me pull these each of these out here. All right, keeping with the tribes, we've got, these are the Southern Plains tribes. So you have this green here. I imagine that kind of goes with this green territory up here. And then you have this, uh, man, I can never get these doggone wrappers off. Uh, the, um, um, these are, I guess orange or yellowish thing. Maybe they go down with these. Cochise, Geronimo. Uh, that was one of the games I think from the 70s uh, that dealt with this topic that I've I, I don't have. Um, so quite a bit of uh, different cards. They look nice, as I said. This might just be like the number of them, so I, I think this probably is card card assisted, not uh, card driven. Um, very nice. You got art. You've got text on how to use it, or what it does, and then you've got some uh, historical text there. Pretty cool. So there's your Southern Plain tribes. Then you've got the. Um, If I can get this over here, you got the settlers, which are going to be, the, I guess, these brown cubes that are coming from either Sacramento or St. Louis over here. And um, deal, a lot deal with the railroad, Black Hills, Buffalo Bill Cody, okay, Wells Fargo, Oregon Trail. So pretty cool stuff here. And this is, you got events and migration cards for this. The Mormons, Civil War vets, all kinds of Pony Express. There we go, cool. Uh, I'm originally from uh, Kansas City and then just north of Kansas City, St. Joe, uh, St. Joseph, where they have the statute of the for the uh, Pony Express. And then they have the exact same statue, uh, or I think it's the exact same statue in Sacramento, at least they used to. So those are settlers. I'll put those there in, in St. Louis for now. Then we get into the U.S. Cavalry. Of course, we have Custer. You need to play that one immediately. That's an event. There's Sheridan, Fort Lincoln, Fort Laramie, Leavenworth. Uh, used to live not too far from there. Fort Kearney is famous in some respects there. There you go. So there is your cavalry. And it looks like you know you have a blue cube for cavalry. And there's some there. So um, 
We'll just put them right there in the middle. So there you have it. Those are the cards. There's the cubes. There's the board. Uh, we can't be remiss without the dice, the rules, the player aid, and, oh, the bag. So that is what you get in a box of Plains Indian Wars. As soon as I get this to the table and get some plays in, then um, I might do some talk about it in a little bit deeper dive. But I probably, I'm thinking about probably just doing an exploration or deep dive or something that covers all these games that I kind of thrown on the table today. Um, I want to get a, a taste of this first, but, uh, and, and kind of do an exploration of how, how this topic is covered by, uh, as you can, as you can see from the, the games that uh, showed, there's a lot of different topics. There's a lot of different designs. There's a lot of different even publishers that have uh, explored this space, and, and that might be worth uh, a special segment there. But for now, there's uh, Plains Indian Wars. Hope this was helpful to you. Uh, love to hear your thoughts on this or any of those games I showed, but your thoughts on this topic, your thoughts on this game, your thought, uh, thoughts on John's designs. Uh, love to hear them. Uh, and start up a, a, a dialogue there. Uh, but most importantly, thanks for spending some time with me. Your time is precious, so any time you spend is greatly appreciated. Thank you, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching.